All right. Are we live? Are we live yet? Not are we live yet? I bet we are live yet. We're getting there. <laughs> I bet we are live. We're getting there. Hello, everybody. It's Danny and Wanda from Deep South Homestead. And he's still playing around getting our chat going. And thank you, Carrie, for yes. the super chat right thank off you. the bat. Right off the we appreciate chat. that. So tonight, well, we're going to talk gardening. I'm going to pull my hat down. But he's probably got something he wants to say before he gets off on a tangent about gardening. But, yeah. you know, we thought we'd talk gardening. You guys want to know what to plant, when to plant. Things like that. So we're going to take questions, and I guess he'll just talk. It ain't all about me. You're the garden expert, <laughs> as well as the construction expert. I'm just the helper. Oh, well. I'm a good helper. Well, I mean, I was sitting here been reading the comments. Everybody's talking about how uh, how cold it is where you're at. It's cold here. It's going to be cold tonight. Tonight, we're going to be down in the low 20s. So, yeah, it's, it's just cold for us. So I'm going to have to move my chair up. Our humidity is uh, extremely high, and uh, when it's when it's high humidity and it's this cold, uh, it it's a hurting cold. Yeah. And it's not good on the plants either. It's very tough on the plants. Our carrots were looking a little weird today. I mean, they, it didn't hurt them, but it the cold is kind of. It'll start turning the tops a little reddish brown yeah. looking. Yeah. So our carrots are outside, so that's one thing. We're about a, are we a month from harvest? About uh, a month. If that long. I looked at some of them uh, yesterday when I walked by there, and they're already uh, over an inch to an inch and a half at the top. I mean, they're already pretty big. Yeah. I didn't pull one up. I just, uh, uh, you know. You I just, just I just top. I just pull the dirt out around the top. Well, we might it. have a big top and no little carrot behind it. We, you yeah. Know. Marshall uh, Farm says freezing rain tomorrow, tomorrow night. Well, they're talking about the possibility tomorrow night into Monday morning could be sleet or depends on how the weather goes. It could be sleet or snow. You know, so we're we don't want either one, but. <laughs> You know, we can't change the fact. A little NC Farmer says, I have a nice hot fire in the wood heater. So do we. So do we. Matter of fact, for three days? For three days, ours has been nonstop just yeah. about. Um, but and ours, we're, we're technically letting ours just die out right now because it's, to. It's too, <laughs> I'm in a short sleeve shirt right now because it's, it's burning up. I ain't going to lie to you. We don't got the house too hot. Yeah. But I've not let it really go out in about three days. We kept it going. And sometimes during the day, it gets a little warm in here, and I'll almost let it go out, and then I'll put something back in it and try to keep it going. I do want to say this. Uh, I do know that while we're live streaming, in just about one minute, the uh, president is supposed to go live. We don't know and if that's true or not. Somebody well, well, sent we, us a message. We got a message that President Trump was going to go live and address the nation and expose a lot of stuff. Now, uh, some of y'all that have the capability of opening up a second window while you're watching us. Newsmax. Uh, yeah. Watch Newsmax and um, see if it's true. See if it's true. And if it is, you might want to every so often update us about what's going on or what he's saying because we can't do that here while we're live streaming. We don't have the technology to open up a second screen. And if we if we open up the phone and try to use it, then we're burning up more data, which means that our live stream is going to be even worse than what it already is. And that may not even be true, you know, and stuff, but we just want you to know we're not really talking about politics tonight. I forbid politics. She has come down on me so hard. I told her, I says, oh, I want to say something so bad tonight. And she says, nope. no. Hey, Alderman Farms. You know, we've been, I've been chatting with Tommy this afternoon, too. Um, we've got a lot going on with the she shed and all yeah. and we're going to have more updates come next week. Um, the last, I can't remember which one was the last one. We showed the outside. No, we, did we show the outside and showing the outside? Mm -hmm. So the one coming up Monday shows what I want. I'm kind of walking you through the inside, telling you kind of what's going on. Plus to show him doing some wiring and, um, uh, I don't forgot a few things inside. Well, I was insulating. 
I was wiring. I've been putting up the ceiling. I mean, there's lots of stuff. And we're putting up wall, the board on the walls, running plumbing, all this type of stuff. I don't remember in the, but then this particular one, I, we hadn't show, I didn't show the walls or the ceiling. The yeah. next one will show walls and ceilings. That'll probably be Wednesday, Thursday, somewhere down the road. Tommy said Patty's getting a she shed too. Yes. All right. Okay, so we're going to be doing dueling she sheds. Ah. <laughs> well, they may beat me because mine is taking some time. I mean, no, y'all, in less than 30 days, I already have a room that I move stuff in. And I'm not going to have shelves yet, but I bet by the end of the week, somebody may be building shelves. <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh, uh, let's see that. Crazed Family Homestead. I, it's Newsmax. Uh, Newsmax. They said if it was on, it would be on all the on the regular media, like ABC, NBC. But they may throw a bias. And then again, they may brown it out. Who knows? Yeah, they may black out. Who knows? I mean, uh, Mutant says, uh, uh, who's that? Yeah, Mutant says that uh, Newsmax will not come up site problems. Okay, so they may scramble it. Who knows? I mean, there's so much stuff going on. I've gotten so much information in about what's going on that literally it blows my mind to the amount of the corruption that we're facing in it. Okay. I am so sorry, guys. <laughs> we ain't talking about that tonight. We're talking about potatoes and carrots and and peas and beans and okay. corn. And y'all can just, if y'all find it, good, go. We're not going to uh, hold it against you. Right. Okay. Hey, Lippy. Um, uh, but anyway. Let's start with. Some gardening techniques. Or I mean, I'm going to just have to get comfortable here because I ain't going to lie to you. I've been climbing up and down ladders, holding stuff over my head, shooting guns all day long. I'm hurting. Okay, so I'm just going to be easy. I'm just going to take it easy. Um, this old body's kind of weary for doing that kind of work. Okay, so Monica says, I've never grown anything. What should I start with first? She's in Southern California in the suburbs. She's never grown anything. She's a California girl. And she's a California girl. She's in Southern California, which means her climate is conducive to growing a lot of stuff. You can grow just about anything. You can grow. But I would probably start out with something like uh, peppers, uh, tomatoes, um, squash, uh, those type things. Cucumbers. Cucumbers. Y'all see Danny's cucumbers last year in the greenhouse? I mean. If he can grow that kind in a greenhouse, somebody ought to be able to grow green some cucumbers. Country Homestead Preacher says Newsmax is working for them. Okay, good deal. But anyway, you know, something simple like that. Um, tomatoes don't require a lot of work. Uh, peppers definitely don't require a lot of work. Um, Marcia Farms wants to know, have you ever grew white Irish potatoes? Uh, yes. Didn't we grow some last year? We grew some this past year. We grew two or three different varieties. We didn't we, like some of them. Some of them, we did not like the German butter balls. Uh but we did like the Yukon Gold. We did like the, uh, what was the other one? Um, we have them all wrote down. In I there. don't know. There was eight of them. Yeah, there was eight different ones. Seven Channels says, hello, Deep South Homestead. Well, hello, Seven Channels. I'm wondering if she's got seven channels at her house. One, um, two, three, four. It's possible. I know of four. So I don't remember the rest. of Five. I can count five. So I don't know about two of them. All right, there was more important things tonight. Danny, what are your thoughts? Thoughts on current events. Uh, guys, I could I could actually tell y'all so much stuff tonight, but I have to gotta understand I've got to be really careful because right now YouTube is looking for anything to pull the channel down by. So what lettuce can you grow that is frost tolerant? Oh, lettuce that's frost tolerant. Romaine? Well, well, romaine is a good one. Uh, whether it's red or green, it doesn't matter. Uh, butter crunch is another one that's pretty frost tolerant. Uh, you got to be careful with things like iceberg lettuce and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Those heads will actually begin to rot on the top if the frost happens. So you got to kind of be um, kind of got to be careful with them. All right. Gigi says, I've never grown beans to dry. Any advice? Going to try growing some this year. Yeah, don't pick them. Let them stay on the vine. <laughs> that is the hardest thing in the world to do. <laughs> me, me and Wanda grew the Cherokee yellow wax beans this past year. We picked the first crop. 
And I looked at her and I said, wow, we've got two gardens with Cherokee King yellow wax beans in them, plus the <laughs> greenhouse. And I told her, I said, we're going to leave these rows for seeds. And I'm telling you, we would walk out there and look at them things, and them beans would be eight and eight eight inches long, hanging there, beautiful yellow beans. The plants were just loaded. The bushes was dark green. And it was so tempting to pick those beans. They're beautiful. We love the yellow beans. And, but we we held off and we did not pick them, and we ended up putting up uh, probably a couple of pounds of seeds uh, for the future, you know. And and I'm telling you, these things are amazing. So if y'all have uh, questions, if you'll put them in large all caps so I can see them, because some people are asking questions and and I can't see them. They're small, so put them in all caps, and I'll try to catch them for him. Uh, any tips on bush beans in containers? Mine don't produce, didn't produce a whole lot last year. Uh, well, we, we've grown bush beans in containers and had fantastic luck with them. Uh, you might want to check your soil pH and the nutrition in your soil because butter beans like a uh, like a pretty neutral soil. Uh, you might want to up the lime a little bit. You might want to try some uh, magnesium in it. I mean, these are some things that. Um, that, and, and back off of the nitrogen, because if you get too much nitrogen, your plants will be all bush and you won't get any beans on them or anything like that or peas. Uh, so you have to kind of be a little bit. Uh, and what do you uh, fertilize them with so that they kind of got an idea on fertilizing with the bush? Well, you want to, especially when they go to blooming, you want to make sure that you use uh, something that's got a high phosphorus content to it. Now, Wanda and I have learned to use. Uh, Dr. Earth's liquid fertilizer, the, the phosphorus fertilizer, is called Bloom and Grow. And, um, you know, that we have found that to be fantastic stuff to use here. Um, have you tried growing artichokes? No. Why didn't y'all build a greenhouse with the wood frame? Well, I actually have the blueprints from Mississippi State University to build a large greenhouse with, um, with wood. But the price of lumber has gone so sky high and it's all treated lumber, which I don't mind the fact that it's treated because it's treated with um, micronized copper, which is not really toxic to the human system. Uh, and, and it's just too expensive. I mean, we can build one out of pipe and we don't have to worry about termites and we can put it up a whole lot faster um, than we can if we try to build one out of wood. All right. When do you transplant cabbage seedlings? They're in central Arab. Alabama zone 8A. If you're in zone 8, uh, the transplant cabbage would probably be, uh, I would probably say the, the end of February. All right. Did you get my asparagus question the other day about not having weather to plant? Yes, I answered it on Patreon. Can I put these crowns in the fridge to slow them down? No, what you need to do is cut the tops off of them that's growing and you need to get you like a five gallon bucket or something like that, fill it with dirt and just put them down in it until your ground is where you can plant because what's going to happen is they're ready to grow and they're uh, they're going to start growing. Uh, I would I would suggest if you could just go ahead and plant them in the ground if you can. Now you're going to need to dig down about eight or ten inches deep to plant them. Do not plant them. Uh, very close to the top of the ground. Plant them really deep, um, and as they sprout and come up, keep putting mulch or dirt over them. What day are we planning on planting English peas? What day are we planning on planting English peas here? <laughs> I'll get it out. <laughs> we usually out. plant our English peas uh, around the first of February. Sometimes we would plant them earlier in January, but we've learned. Uh, to just wait until the 1st of February uh, sometime, um, you know, to see. Uh, they usually do better for us then. But my greenhouse is awesome, y'all. I am picking English peas in January. Now, I'm not getting a lot yet. I'm getting enough for a meal, but they're loaded, and they're loaded with blooms, and I'm watering them every day. So look, we're going to see how this greenhouse does with English peas in January. I'm picking them, not planting, picking and eating. That's awesome. Oh, same Nobody's same. saying anything about the president being on anywhere. So okay, okay. maybe so maybe, maybe it was uh, maybe it wasn't false. true. It was false, maybe. 
because we get tons of information in here. We have to test it to see what's what. Um, we have no way of knowing until they said nine o'clock. Now, I will say this. President Trump has a history of being 15 to 20 minutes late for everything he does. All right. So, so um, we're back to. Yeah. <laughs> We're back to our stuff. Any recommendations on organic soil for raised beds or grow bags? Uh, We've used mainly the um, Miracle Grow may, I mean, soil. Yes, yeah, not organic though. I mean, no, but it, it seems to do well with our stuff. Our stuff grows really well. We use a kind that's got the time release fertilizer in it, and yeah. it, it is so far it has done really well for us. Yeah. Um, all right, so what is the first things that we plant every year in the garden? We're not going to kind of do greenhouse right now, but in the garden, what would be the first things coming up this year? Uh, let me see. Prep statement of disability. Let me see. That's Vicky, I think. Danny, I have sweet potatoes that are sprouting already. What do I do with the... Uh, where did it go? <laughs> Uh, what does she do with them if they're sprouting? She could go ahead and put them in buckets of dirt and be making her slips. Yeah, you could go ahead and if, if you have some five-gallon buckets or something like that, or two-gallon buckets, plastic buckets, you could <laughs> fill them with dirt, put them in there, and um, and just bring them into the house where it's warm at, keep them a little damp. Uh, don't wet them too much now because they'll rot. And you could go ahead and let your slips be growing for, um, uh, you know, for, for this coming spring and, and the slips are not going to get too long because if the vines get four foot long it doesn't matter you can cut them in sections and still replant them okay what are the food prices how are the food prices here they are horrible one and i went to the store the other day for the first time in forever and we just decided to take a look at some things uh butter we normally pay two dollars and sixty something cents a pound for they went up to four ninety five a pound. Organic was nine dollars and something a pound. So for a yeah, pound of butter. for one pound of butter. Uh, so so the prices are really getting to be outrageous. Uh, we was looking at cheese. Uh, some cheeses we couldn't even find anymore, and what cheese we did find uh, had like doubled in price. Yeah. Um, so nadia says i'm so excited my husband is making me a greenhouse mm -hmm. yes well that was one of the things what are we starting to start with it'll be the english peas are always well, our first crop the english peas will be our first crop to put in the ground here in a couple of weeks uh then we'll uh our seed potatoes will be right behind that usually oh the second week in february sometimes we plant them uh it just depends on availability of 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 seed potatoes, and then it depends on uh, soil conditions, whether yes. or not, you know. Then yes. he has an English pea manual, just in case anybody doesn't know that. This tells you beginning to end how to plant English peas, or what some people call green peas. Green peas, yeah. And then you were asking about sweet potatoes. He does have a, I don't know, I'm crooked, sweet potato manual. They are both on our Etsy store. How to grow slips the whole nine yards so you don't have to go yeah. buying slips and hunting them all over the place you can learn how to do it yourself that's what we're all about is teaching you how to do things for yourself um yeah there, everything is in those two books you need to know about being able to grow english peas or sweet potatoes oh let's see there have you canned dry canned flour and cornmeal yes yes we have it turns out really nice we haven't had any problem with it um, let's see there. Delane says, Newsmax said Trump may make a statement in about an hour. Okay. I told you he's always late, so you don't have to worry about that. Which direction is best for a greenhouse, east and west or north and south? Depends on where you live at in the country. Uh, here where we live at, we are living in a hurricane zone. Uh, our hurricanes, the bad side comes out of the northeast toward the southwest, and we, we angled our greenhouses in that direction which gives us perfect sun exposure in the summertime and perfect sun exposure in the wintertime and really helps protect them from the hurricanes. Okay, so what else did you say? Somebody said something. Do we have three rivers cornmeal? Corn no. No. 
Not that I know of. Not that I've never heard of it. All right. How long is the inoculant for peas good for? Usually the inoculant for peas is only good for like maybe a month or two. Uh, after that, the bacteria in it begins to die pretty rapidly. Okay, so after the English peas, then we plant the potatoes, then usually green beans. Green beans and then uh, sweet corn and green beans usually go in at the same time. Uh, what time I, is that? And that's going to probably be an 8B for us. Uh, it's usually about mid-March. All right, so Gail has been telling us, and I meant to say that when you're talking about potatoes, uh, Hoss Tools has said that if you want seed potatoes from them, you have to order them now because they're going fast. We put our order in, what, a month ago? <laughs> At least a month ago. <laughs> We've already got ours gone. All right. Uh, Doug and Stacey said, fake news, no Trump tonight. Okay, that. That's what we were wondering. We were wondering about that because every, everybody keeps sending us these emails in here, and uh, we don't know what to expect. Yeah. Um, ABC XYZ said I found an awesome deal on sweet potatoes at a stand nearby on a by the black dirt here. Canned seven quarts today and had some for supper. They were yummy. Awesome. Awesome. That's what I'm saying. Find those deals and make it happen. Um, Goldshaw Farms. Hey, he said Trump's too busy. <laughs> Hiding from impeachment. Uh, yeah. That, don't be surprised. I I know a lot of stuff right now, but don't be surprised about what's going to probably happen in the next few days. So let me just say that. All right. So now on to next topic. We get starting seeds and how to start. Seeds. Golden Green says you have to start sweet potatoes from a plant, not a potato. Uh, well, you use a potato to grow the plant, and then you put the plant in the ground. You have to make slips. You, you have to make slips. Yes. Um, talk about the seeds. and. Let me say starting. something. Oh. Doug, I'm thoroughly enjoying <laughs> the cabin build. I watch I watch every every one of the videos. Uh, Doug, I'm going to tell you right now, you're in trouble. Yeah. Very much in trouble. I told him I was banning him from watching YouTube. He watched lot, lot, uh, Living Traditions. Last year, we ended up with two greenhouses. He's watching you build a log cabin. I told him he can't watch log cabin builds. I'll be building a log cabin somewhere. Well, I mean, you know, you never. <laughs> no, <laughs> we gonna you, finish you, you, what we got started. <laughs> you, you never know. I mean, uh, deep south they want a log home. I mean, you never know. I mean, deep south got enough stuff going on for about six months at least. After six months, we'll talk about the log home deal. We'll see about it. What? Y'all. Um, Told us that grocery garden says, I got purple sweet potatoes from Azure and they taste awful. All starch and no sugar. Yeah, if you eat, it doesn't matter where you get the purple sweet potatoes from. Purple sweet potatoes, you got to acquire a taste for them because they are not like regular sweet potatoes. All right. So where do you start your seeds? See, I want to know I, uh. No, that's not it. Where do I start my seeds? Yeah. They're asking where I start them. Not, not none of that. We uh, we have a small greenhouse on the back side of our shop that we built years ago with um polycarbonate panels, um, and from Tough Tex, and uh, we usually will put our seeds in that. Now we have the Hoss Tool seed trays. They're like 190 something or 160 something uh, places in them. These are special uh, seed trays. Because the way they're designed, the roots grow straight down in them. They have things in there that keeps the roots from growing around in circles. And uh, they're awesome for making, for growing plants. Now, I mean, they work perfect. You can get them from Hoss Tool Seed Company. And you can get the tray that they set in there. These things, you can run over them with, with a vehicle almost, and it won't hurt them. They're made to last a lifetime. Okay. Um. Danny plants log cabins. <laughs> Yo, I do have my hands full. Lots of people think it's Wanda says I won't and Danny builds. No. It's, he's, he's sitting here and he goes, I really want to build a, a greenhouse. And I said, no, we don't need a greenhouse. We got a greenhouse on the back of the barn. He goes, no, I really want one of them big greenhouses. I want a high one. I'm like, we don't need a high tunnel. We don't need that. He goes, yeah, I think we need that. 
And so we sit here and discuss. And before long, I'm going, Danny, you know, I think we really need a high tunnel. And he goes, yeah, we do, don't we? <laughs> I think he has a way of convincing really well, well I mean, making me think it's my, my fault. That's the whole concept about anything. You've got to make <laughs> the other person believe it was their idea. And if you can do that, you can do anything. And, and you know, um, we are, uh, you know, we, we we might need a log home. You never know. <laughs> Thank you, Doug. He said nice tips on the um, metal roof. Yeah, we're um, now to the point that we're putting. Uh, well, we just finished wiring, and my room is ready. Yeah, her room's already done. Without the shelves, you know, Danny's got to my shelves, but my room's done. So next week, y'all will see Wanda moving some stuff in, huh? Uh, probably so. I would have done it today. Uh, James says, do y'all use any manure from your cows? Uh, the last manure I used in my cows destroyed my greenhouse uh, <laughs> because we didn't realize that the hay that we had bought had been sprayed with Grazon. Uh, where we live at, all hay has been sprayed with Grazon unless you find somebody who, uh, you know, who actually doesn't use any, which is very rare here. Uh, I was lucky this past fall to find a guy who had a field that had not been sprayed and I bought all the hay he had. And I'm kind of getting a little nervous because I've only got five or six bales left to make it through till spring. All right, so my Kentucky home says thinking about putting our green stalk in a portable greenhouse up close to the house. Has anyone t tried this to winter plants? I do that. My green stalk is by my house in a mini greenhouse. And y'all to see, I'm going to do a video this week, hopefully on crazy days. I've got radishes. The leaves are about this long, just big, beautiful. I've got a tomato plant in there that's overwintered. It's not producing, but it's pretty. It's getting to the point that it should start blooming shortly. I've got um, what's the red red lettuce? Romaine. Is it red romaine? You got lettuce? red romaine. It's, yeah. It's starting to bolt. Yeah. It's starting to bolt. It's been there a while, been eating on it, but it's um, but mine my green stalk and I got a new green stalk, so uh, we're gonna do a green stalk video. But yeah, they'll go uh, in a mini greenhouse. Someone asked the question: Have we started milking the cow that had the new calf yet? Um, no, we don't drink milk. We don't use milk. Period. Um, for anything, um, and, and there's a reason behind it. I mean, I, I'm lactose intolerant. Plus, my daddy always told me that uh, human beings were the only people who continued to drink milk after they were weaned. And uh, he said all of nature quits drinking milk once they're weaned. And we use almond milk. We'll for use cooking. some almond milk for cooking, but that's about it. Um, I used to have dairy goats, and I sold the milk from them. Um, but if we need some butter or something like that, we could milk our cow yeah. to get the butter from. Uh, but we have so much butter canned that um, we're not going to need any for quite some time. Uh, it could be. My daughter was texting me a while ago, but it's, it's coming on. It's coming on the computer here. It jumps up. Facebook's jumping back and forth, making a weird racket. Yeah. And. I may have to turn that app off on this thing if it keeps yeah, up. Yeah, it's something to do with um, notifications. Um, do we have grapes in our greenhouse yet? No, we do not have any grapes in the greenhouse. We cannot grow grapes here. Uh, we have so many wild muscadines and scuppernongs here that they cross-pollinate, and your grapes never really turn out to be true grapes. They end up being just crossed-up scuppernongs. All right. Now, James wants to know about yellow wax beans or rattlesnake beans. Can you kind of explain a little bit about what we plant with those? Uh, yellow wax beans, uh, we only plant one kind of yellow wax bean, and that's the Cherokee yellow wax bean. Um, and we plant the bush when we plant them. The rattlesnake beans, we do plant those, and we plant the pole beans on the rattlesnake beans. We love both of them. The only drawback to the rattlesnake bean is if you don't get it while it's tender, and young, it will have a string in it. It will have to be, you know, destringed. But other than that, um, our favorite is the yellow, the Cherokee yellow wax bean. That's our favorite taste. Yeah. Uh, the shelf life of canned butter. I mean, I don't know. Ours is how old. Well, we've had some a couple years old. The oldest I have is probably two or two and a half years old because I rotate out. When I do butter, I don't usually leave it past two years, but I've had people tell me it'll last up to five years. 
So I don't know. I can't say mine lasts five years because I don't let it last that long. We rotate everything out within two years. And I think that's a good thing for you to consider Mm -hmm. is rotate, rotate, rotate. Don't let your stuff sit there five years. Yeah, and guys, hit the thumbs up button because if, if you if you don't hit the thumbs up button, what happens is it doesn't throw us into a good algorithm and nobody ever gets to watch this video hardly. I mean, the view stays way down on it. Um, hitting the thumbs up on our videos really helps put it into an algorithm that will show YouTube that it's a good video. Will we be selling Cherokee yellow wax beans? No. Probably not. I don't think we. I don't know. I don't if we, think we've got. I don't what, think we have enough to sell um, this year. This was our first year saving seeds, so we yeah. didn't really. We only. I think we only have like maybe two pounds of seeds. I don't think we have any more than that. And I would be a little leery about trying to get rid of them. Do you like growing butter beans in the spring or fall? Fall. Always grow your butter beans in the fall. There's my daughter. Me and she jumped on here when I said on her live stream. Yeah. She's sitting here texting me, expecting me to answer, and I wasn't answering. <laughs> Zoe says, I have not drank milk in over 40 years. Well, my friend, it's been longer than that for me. <laughs> Wonder when pressure canning, do you ever have liquid from your jars leaked into the canner? Uh, very seldom. It uh, does happen, but not a lot. It's. I figured out if you overfill your jars just a little bit or if you get your pressure up too high and leave it too high for very long, it causes it to bubble out more. And then there's some pro- some things that you put in there. It's just going to do it anyway. Um, seems like green beans, for some reason, I, I it may not be a lot, but you can smell it in the canner. I don't know why, but green beans just is something that I smell off mm-hmm. and on. Sally says, do y'all go to farmer's markets? No, we do not go to farmer's markets. We don't have any here, one reason, but we don't go because we raise everything that we eat ourselves. We would have to go an hour and a half away to either way. Either way. And when you get there, let me tell you what, most farmer's markets are not honest. I hate to say that. (laughs) We were at the U Picket and the people that run the farmer's markets come to the U Picket and get it and take it to the farmer's market. So you're getting U Picket stuff yeah, not it's, their stuff they, they they i mean these people that we talked to they were portraying it as stuff that they raised and uh and they did not raise it it was in fields that had been sprayed with chemicals and everything else and uh it it you you just really i mean all my life i've talked to people who took stuff to farmers markets and some of them were honest uh but a majority of them are there just to make a dollar yeah they buy them at these you pick it for a low price and then double the price when they get to a farmer's market. Yeah. You can drink the uh, milk from a Dexter cows. If, if, I mean, Danny could. I could drink it, don't. yeah. Well, it's an A2 milk. I could drink it because it's an A2 milk. Um, I just, I'm just not a milk drinker. Um, I, I like milk, uh, the dairy products, uh, but I'm not a big time milk drinker. My daddy was. Now, my daddy drank the fool out of milk uh, not no, not necessarily milk. He would take my, he would make my mama set a gallon of fresh milk out on the <laughs> on the countertop, and he would wait till it clabbered and it just about. I thought it was rotten, um, and when it clabbered up real good after several days, then he would drink a mouthful or two of it every night before he went to bed. And he said that um, that put the good bacteria back in your stomach. And I mean, the man lived to be old and was strong as an ox you know what I mean he, yeah he liked that clabbered milk whatever yeah. I mean yeah but um some people are saying they wish they had a farmer's market like like we do um Caitlin wants to know will we put away as much food this summer now that we have the greenhouses uh no no we probably will not we are learning to grow something that we can eat 365 days a year Right now, if I need something to eat, I have onions, garlic, I have carrots, we have lettuce, um, we have some potatoes in the greenhouse. We dug potatoes this week. Did we show that video? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we, so we, we dug potatoes. So we had potatoes, fresh, fresh potatoes. And snap week. beans. Snap beans, and English, English peas. peas. Um, and carrots. The, I mentioned the carrots. Uh, what else have we got fresh? 
I can't remember. Tomatoes. Oh, we did. Yeah, I've got a few tomatoes on the uh, cabinet. Here we so fresh we're tomatoes. eating fresh as much as possible. I just finished the, picking the green beans the end of last week, and we've eaten green beans for about five weeks now out of the greenhouse. Uh, at least, what, three meals a week, four meals a week out of the greenhouse, which was awesome. And so we're working toward rotating in the greenhouse. I just replanted all the green beans. Um, I planted some more spinach. I planted radishes. I wasn't in the greenhouse. I don't know. I made a video. It's always a mystery when one to plant. Y'all had to watch the video. That's why. I, that's why I do the video so that people can say, "Hey, look, you planted this here. That ain't what you planted." Because uh, I forget, but I did do that. So uh, we're trying to rotate things out, and that means I won't have to can as much. And I forbid him to plant. 600 sweet potato plants and what 100 pounds of potatoes <laughs> this we year, just are not doing that this, this year this year we are not going out like we normally do i mean last year we planted almost 100 pounds of seed potatoes and i bet you i threw away <laughs> over 100 pounds of potatoes that we just didn't ever eat or we couldn't get up i mean they started sprouting now in the woods over here where I dumped them out, I got potatoes growing all in the woods. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. But this year we'll plant a moderate of a moderate amount of Irish potatoes, and we will plant um, instead of planting seven hundred sweet potato slips, we'll probably drop back to around two hundred. Yeah. Uh, do we have a hard time cooking for just the two of us? Um, no, not really. I've learned a long time ago. I used to cook for seven. I had five children, so I cooked for seven people. And it was really hard for a long, long time for me to learn to cut back and cook for two. But since um, Danny and I have married, I've learned that I can cook for two. Lots of times I cook for seven, and I chop the meals up, and we eat several days out of it. So it's easy to cook just one meal at a time, but I like cooking <laughs> a lot and eating it for days. Oh, man. R.D. Franklin says, log cabin kit coming in the mail, Wanda. Don't encourage him. <laughs> I'll, have, I'll have him and Doug on the phone together tomorrow, and they're going to be going, hey, I'm going to go, no. <laughs> what is my definition of a moderate amount of potatoes? A moderate amount of potatoes for us would probably be around, uh, probably around 200 pounds. Because 200 pounds would probably be enough for us. Mm, now, because I have probably... Well, you've got several hundred cans. 150 jars of potatoes in the cellar. I wouldn't doubt that I don't have at least 150 or better. So um, we've got enough for at least a year, year and a half. If we plant more and I can, say, 50 or 75 jars, yeah, we're plenty good. Are we getting enough from the greenhouses to eat fresh and to can? Not can. Not can because we, um, the things that we're growing in the greenhouse, now we haven't got all of our English peas in yet. Now, when the English peas yeah. come in, we may have enough of them to can. Yeah, we'll but see. Up until this point, we've been doing experimental gardening in the greenhouse. Now, we have, uh, we have got enough peppers to do what we wanted to do with because we've had more peppers than we can. Oh, my God. I don't even know how many peppers. Hold on. Somebody wants you to talk about planting asparagus crowns, but hold that thought. Do you worry about the government or Antifa type people targeting you and taking your reserves and supplies? I do, and always wonder at the no. braveness of YouTubers. Um, no. Not really. Not really. I mean, with it my might happen, but not really. With my background and my, my you know, where I've been taught, uh, trained, uh, only a fool would try it. You know, I mean, now if you if you if the military came in here, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not going to I'm not going to bulk the military because I know the capabilities that they have. It'd be foolish of me to stop to stop yeah. the military. But if a bunch of thugs come in here, yeah, I, yeah, I, I pretty much well feel like we could probably take care of that. Okay, so now asparagus. Explain how to grow asparagus. Well, asparagus to needs to be planted in a ditch about six to eight inches wide and about twelve inches deep. And in the bottom of the, of, the, of the hole, when you dig it, you need to make a, like a little mound in it. And your crown needs to sit on that mound and spread the roots over it. 
and you need to put about two inches of dirt over that uh, crown and as it begins to pop through the soil and begin to grow up you put a little bit more dirt on it and you just keep doing that till you get up to the top of the ground level and then you mulch it good and fertilize it and you're usually good to go from that point forward you want your roots to be really deep in the ground but shallow to start with and build on it yeah but your roots start off deep in the ground yeah a deep hole a but deep not hole. covered up all the yeah, way yeah don't cover it up all the way yeah i've got asparagus in the greenhouse and i ate asparagus for what several weeks oh yeah it's all probably fix and start popping out again do we ever use garlic powder to mask the smell of or plants uh, from pests. Now we just plant garlic in amongst our stuff. Uh, we don't have to use the garlic powder. We just we literally plant stuff in amongst it. If I do this, is that going to kill us? What are you trying to do? I was going to make another moderator. Yeah. No, you're on the wrong one. I ain't getting it. It's moving along. That do it? No, you're still on the wrong one. Okay, I can't do this. I was going to do that, but I... Well, you can do it. You just, you take too much time to do it. That's your problem. Is that it? Yeah. You sure? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, I was making... Yeah, okay. He yeah, did you're it. just too slow. When you sit I'm there, really you, slow. I'm playing The chat's with moving it. along. You're sitting here like moving right here like this, and the chat just runs off and leaves. <laughs> I mean, you can't Thank do you, that. Gerard. Thank you so much. Um yeah, uh, so asparagus is a biggie if you plant that. That's a lifetime plant because yeah. it'll last 30 years in the ground. I mean, now, depending on the variety you plant, if you plant the uh, the Mary Washingtons or the Martha Washingtons, they're, uh, they're an heirloom variety and the seeds will drop on the ground. If you've got good fertile soil, they'll continue to come up and just multiply, which to me, I don't think is a bad thing. But if you don't want them to multiply, then you need to get a, uh, a hybrid variety, something like the Jersey Giant or something mm -hmm. like that, uh, that um, literally doesn't have the seeds don't multiply. Yeah, and we really like it. I saw Amy was asking about a recipe. We started grilling it. I didn't like asparagus. And Danny said, let me go get some before we plant it and see if you like it. And so we went into town, got some asparagus, come back, and he grilled it. Y'all, that was the best tasting stuff. I was I was hooked. And then sometimes I take and douse it in oil and put it in the um, oven. And what else have we done with asparagus? No. That's about it. You can pickle it. You can do a lot of yeah, things. Yeah, but right. I, now I, I bought some that was mm. dill, tasted like dill. I put it in dill and pickled it, and it was awesome. So asparagus, dill, asparagus is great. Oh, uh, there's a question there. When do you plant garlic in southern Florida? Last October. I mean, you, <laughs> <laughs> you should have planted it in October. It should have been planted in October and um, early November, but you can still plant it now. It just may not make a big bulb. That's the only yeah. thing about it. How do you heat the greenhouses? We don't. We don't heat our greenhouses. We, we like our greenhouses. One of them, we keep closed up all the time. As a matter of fact, it stays too hot. Uh, my greenhouse, we leave it open because I, I have fruit trees in it that I want to go through chill hours. So, And plus, I have cool weather crops in it. When is a good time to transplant asparagus? Uh, early spring, around late February, early March. Yeah. Um, All of my farms said, I used to hate asparagus. Now I love it. When do you start onions in Mississippi and do you start from seed? If you're going to start them from seed, you need to start them in late September and plant them in the 1st of November. Uh, we planted ours a little late this year. We got ours at the end of November. So yeah. you, know, you want your onions in. Uh, in place, you got to know now when you buy onions, you got to know if you got long day, short day, or day neutral. Now, living in the south here, we need a short day. Uh, above a certain line, uh, you need a neutral. And above that line, you need a uh, long day. Uh, sit back with Danny so audio, if audio doesn't equal out or like the camera focus. Oh, okay. I'm trying to read the thing. We had to put the computer back further tonight than we usually do, and it's hard to see it. Um, oh, let's see. Let's see. 
Uh, garlic needs to go through a freeze to divide into bulbs. Yes, it does. It needs to go through stratification. Um, some people put them in the refrigerator, the bottom shelf. I've tried that. I've never really had any luck with it. And if you're in a warm climate like we are, you can just about forget planting garlic to make a big clove. <laughs> the best thing to do is go with elephant garlic, uh, which is really a leak to start with, but it is a good garlic. Um, it, uh, it will make a large clove and it does extremely well. We have tons of it around our place here that we have got started everywhere and we love it. All right, Gerald wants to know, when are you putting your sweet potatoes in the ground for slips? Probably uh, the second or third week in February. All right. Um, somebody's saying something about pokeweed. Pokeweed is delicious only when it's young, and you have to boil it two or three times in order for it to, to actually be good. Are potato onions worth the effort? Uh, it what depends. It depends on your taste. Uh, I don't particularly care for them, but um, if you like them, then you know it, it. It's like we planted eight different varieties of potatoes this past year. We only found two or three of them that we really cared for, so we won't be planting a lot of them again. When is the best time of the year to take cuttings for a new elderberry plant? Uh, probably be the early spring, too. <laughs> Adventure what? Oh, World, uh, hoping for snow in, is that Banner? Banner, Mississippi, any advice on horseradish planting? Tommy uh, Alderman gave the, me some. Well, the, the Aldermans are on here. <laughs> uh, ask Tommy Alderman and them. They have better luck with horseradish than we did. Uh, ours didn't make it. Um, it. Mine grew, and I kept it for about a year. Now that we're in a greenhouse, it might do great. But... Yeah, Tommy Alderman, I need some more horseradish. <laughs> <laughs> Mine grew for about a year, and where we had it was poor soil. And when I dug it up, it really hadn't grown that much. And um, it, I think I've used it in something, so I didn't keep a start of it. Um, oh, he said, sit back with me. He said, it's not the camera, it's not the lens, it's, it's the audio. The audio may be... Yeah, yeah, I get it. That's why I'm trying to sit back. I just couldn't read it hardly. Yeah, uh, somebody said, what happened to Freedom Acres? Um, nothing's happened to them. They live right next door to us over <laughs> here. Uh, they live in their own little world. Uh, we don't mess with them. They don't mess with us. Um, that's the way it should be. Um, they have their life. We have ours. Our channels don't interfere with each other. We, you know, we try not to uh, intrude on one another's uh, rights in that area. What are you... When are you planting the English peas? Probably in about another week or so. Is it too early to start sweet potato slips? Yeah, well, it depends on where you live. But where we live at, yes, it's too early here. We would probably wait until mid, you know, probably mid-February. Where can I get ye turkey yellow wax beans? Oh, you can get them from a number of seed companies. We've got, uh, we, uh, we've got some seed catalogs. I was just going to show you some of the catalogs. but These are um, some of the places that, um, now if you're looking for onions, this is where you can get your onion sets at um, from Dixondale. I don't need that. Um, another good seed catalog is Vermont Seed Catalog. We have ordered from them in the past. Uh, they, they have uh, really good stuff. Now, if you're looking for an unusual tomato variety, now I don't totally, I don't endorse this company by no means because I think they're probably owned by the Big M company. But, uh, but, unusual. If, but if you're looking for an unusual tomato, totally tomatoes has them. Anything that you can't find somewhere else. Now, if you're looking for good organic seeds raised by a very independent company, uh, High Mowing Seed Company is a really good company. We've gotten lots of seeds from them in the past. And, of course, there's the old tried and true. Now, we don't use a lot of their seeds, but um, but a lot of people highly recommend this. If you live up in the central part of the United States, uh, they sell a lot of seeds to people up there that have a lot of good luck with them. Uh, down in the Baker Creek. Down in the deep south, we don't have a tremendous amount of luck with them. But we, we use Hoss Tools. And we, I don't have one of their catalogs, or yeah, I'll show you. Our, our um, favorite is Hoss Tool because their seeds – 
You watch our videos. They've uh, been amazing. They have been amazing. The squash this year, we spaghetti squash, the spaghetti regular squash, 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 it don't matter. Cucumbers, everything produced like fifty times more than it usually does. Uh, it the seeds were fantastic. And yeah. so uh, well, let's put I got I planted five seeds from the uh, spaghetti squash. Yeah. And I got fifty five spaghetti squash from it. Yes. So five fifty five. I mean, that's a pretty good ratio. Yeah, and I got a spaghetti squash video coming up next week, probably on. Well, I fixed it for Deep South. I may have to put it on Deep South. Y'all gonna like my spaghetti squash? It was good. Danny bragged on it. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, Baker Creek is sold out right now of a lot of stuff, which is where a lot of seed companies is that way. Hoss Tool has begun to get a lot of their seeds in. They've told me, uh, Travis said they've gotten a lot of them to start coming in. But if you want them, you better go ahead and get them. Now, like our yeah. carrot seeds, a lot of people will ask us, where do you get your carrot seeds from? Our carrot seeds are called the Corota carrot. Uh, we get them from a company called Kitazawa. Uh, we, seed we've company. To supply those for a long time. Well, we're carrot gonna, seeds are only good for a couple of three years, so yeah. we probably going to reorder. They are some really good carrots. They they're a smooth carrot, and they they grow super fantastic here. So we're hoping to have some really good. Um, the seed company we use is Hoss Tools. H O S S T O O T O. T O O L S. T O O L S. Hoss Tool. And there's a link in the description. Of yeah, our if video. you use our link in the description below the video down here, you get extra packs of seeds too, I believe. Well, they were putting out last year. I don't know about that. Oh, uh, they. I think they're still doing it this yeah. year. They just. Uh, we usually choose a particular variety for someone to have as a gift pack. Yeah. Um. I'm sitting so far away from it. I got to squeeze my eyes. I know. That's why I'm yeah. having trouble too. Uh, let's see here. There's more varieties of seed companies too. We have oh yeah, um, there's Shimways. Yeah, we we've ordered Shimways. from the Shimways. We've got stuff from Gurneys. We've got stuff from Stark Brothers. We I also mean, got uh, some of our asparagus well, and stuff from uh, Grower Solutions. Solution. The Grower Solutions, where we get our greenhouses from, they carry lots of gardening supplies. They carry lots of fruit trees, lots of uh, um. Strawberry plants, asparagus, all that kind of stuff. They yeah, carry all that's that. That's where we got some of those. And if you look in the description down below, you'll find our link. And if you use it, use the promo code Deep South, and it will save you ten percent on your purchase. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm um, saying. We've got a lot of companies that we deal with. We're not just with one company, but we save most of our seeds and. When we hunt something unusual or something that we like that we don't have very many seeds of, we go to that company and buy up some and save seed. So you, there's a lot of things. There's one, something I wanted to read them right quick. Um, this is in a book, Rising Prices, Empty Shelves. I read this book here a while back, but I picked it up the other day. And it's talking about survival. And everybody's wanting to know about raising stuff for survival and all that. The first thing it says, survival has three parts. Uh, the mindset is. Yeah. The first is the decision to survive. You have to you have to mentally tell yourself, I'm going to survive. That's the first part. That's the first part of anything. The mental side of anything of survival, the mental side is always the worst. Yes. The second part is practice. Yeah. Learning your skills. And, and that's, a, that's ahead of time. You don't wait till you yeah, have to yeah. survive. You learn it ahead of time. Yeah, and what we're doing now, learning to grow, learning to preserve, and all that, if you get it down and you're, it's second nature, then you don't, when something happens, you already know how to do it. If you've got to figure out how to grow or figure out how to can if something happens, then you're going to be spazzing because if yeah. you try to plant potatoes in June and they don't work, You've just messed when up. You're trying to plant okra in, in the wintertime. Yeah. I mean, it, it's all about, it's like when I used to train guys, it's like muscle memory. Everything mm -hmm. is about muscle memory. When you're like a firearm, it's, it's a constantly about muscle memory. When you're firing a weapon, you clip the clip out. You don't try to catch it with your hand. You just let it fall to the ground. All this stuff is muscle memory. Same thing with gardening. Mm -hmm. Once you do it over and over and over and over, 
it becomes second nature to you. You don't have to stop and think about it. And the same with canning, the same with cooking. Yes. If you don't cook now and something happens and you've got to learn to cook from scratch, I feel for your family. I'm just going to say because you're going to oh, yeah. have a hard you time have, feeding your family. You don't have a family. hard time feeding your family. The third part of the survival thing is imagination and curiosity. You got to figure out how to do things with what you, you gotta, have. You got to have a creative imagination. Yeah. You've got to you've got to get out of your mind the old way of doing everything because surviving is not going to be like you're doing now. Run into the store. You're not going to be able to run to a grocery store. You're not going to be able to open a refrigerator and get what you want. You're not going to be able to just run into a cupboard and get what you want. Everything's going to change. You're going to have to learn to be creative with what you cook, with what you do. You have to learn to eat different. You have to learn to eat fresh, eat wild, eat less. Make sure your calories and your proteins are correct uh, in order to stay fit and healthy. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to throw that out there because I thought that was pretty telling. Danny knows all this stuff, but when I read it, I guess it, he can say it all day long and it don't click sometimes. <laughs> so a uh, pine tree is another place to get seeds. There's lots of them out We've there. We've actually ordered in the past from pine tree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but now... Is it time for them to start getting their fruit trees and their um, berries and stuff like that? You need it. If you're going to get fruit trees, because I've already got word there's going to be a shortage of all that stuff this year, you need to go ahead and get your fruit trees ordered. You need to get your berry plants ordered. You need to go ahead and get your order in on all these things because they're probably going to run out. Yeah. So those, those are some of the things, too. I mean, sometimes you don't think about nut trees and fruit trees and berries as being part of your garden, but you should, because if you can eat off that, like when our um, berries start coming in, the first berries that come in are the huckleberries, and that's a native plant for us. Yes. They come in in into April, May, um, first of May. They come in around the end of April, first of May. So we start it. having berries early. Yeah. And then when the huckleberries stop, the blueberries have started. And so we Both have dewberries come in while the huckleberries are coming. Yeah, the we have dewberries and blackberries. So all these berries are coming. We have the um, mulberries actually come in first. The mulberries come in before all of them. Do. Like the end of yeah. April, maybe middle of the end of April, we have mulberries. So we have a variety of berries that come in at different times. So we would be able to eat for quite a few months off of those. And so you have to think of those things, how how they play out and when they come in. Um, Amy said, should some of the fruit trees be planted in multiples to grow better? Yes. Always look when, Always you, buy look when you buy them to see if they need a pollinator. And if they do, uh, find the pollinator. Look for trees that grow in your area. Not all fruit trees will grow and produce where you live at. They'll all make a tree, but they won't all produce so make sure when you go to buy trees like where we live at here the fruit trees they plant in Hattiesburg which is 40 miles north of us here won't grow and produce here we have to have a totally different tree than they do Hattiesburg north begins a whole nother grow zone so totally different from there check in here grow check zone. your grow zones yes and always check the plants and I mean when you buy a fruit tree Read on it. If it says self-pollinate, and you're good. But if yeah. it says it needs a pollinator, make sure you get what it says it needs to pollinate. And if you can get some kind of normal uh, wild tree that will like a like like say apples, for instance, a crab apple tree will usually pollinate any apple. So make sure you get something like a Macintosh crab apple or something like that, or a Whitney crab apple, anything like that. Um, will pollinate most all the others. Even an ornamental crab apple will pollinate your apple. So, you know, you want to think about those kind of things. Yeah, and, and another thing you might want to look at with the trees. Now, we found this out last year when we started to order certain trees, they won't ship to Mississippi. And we right. said, why not? And they go, well, there's laws in Mississippi that don't allow us to send this tree and this tree and this tree to Mississippi. Yeah. So we're finding that out when you order, 
there are certain states that you cannot order certain trees. So you have to watch with each company and see what you can and cannot order. That's going to be a biggie, too. Carol Wendell says, are lima beans hard to grow in zone nine? No, they're really not. And depending on the kind of lima bean, now here where we live at, the green baby limas do not do well. Uh, the Christmas limas do really well. Uh, the speckled butter beans do really well. Speckled butter peas. Speckled butter <laughs> peas do really well. I mean, it just depends on the variety. You want to check in your area to see. You might want to talk to some of the older people who've grown stuff in your area. That really helps out a lot. Do you think the county extension office is a good place to learn what fruit trees will grow? That's a yes and no answer because... I have went to my county extension office here, and they say all these different fruit trees will grow. I bought them and planted them on my property, wasted a lot of years of my life, which I don't have to live, and they didn't do too well. I talked to some of the older people that was out here, and they told me, said, look, the only trees that's going to grow and produce here are going to be the Anna, the Ein Shamir, the Dorset Golden, and I planted those. Bam, I had apples. You know, so hey, sometimes it pays just to listen to the older people or ask around in your community and find what trees are growing. If you see a tree with apples on it, ask them what, or peaches, ask them what variety that is. Why does Mississippi have so many laws about plants going in and out? Because we have a lot of insect problems in Mississippi. We have uh, <laughs> Kogon grass here, we have fire ants here. If I ship you, a plant that has dirt on it and has fire ants to your house and you live in another state and I accidentally put some of my dirt in there and send it to you and I don't see that there's fire ants, I could start fire ants in your state. Yeah. That is one of the big yeah. reasons. Y'all don't want fire ants. That's why Danny and I, if we do anything, we don't send dirt with stuff, you know, not out of the yard. Um, just Jeanette for Jeanette for Life says, "Do you uh, do you have a remedy for cedar apple rust on your apple trees?" Uh, there's only one remedy for that, and that is to grow apple trees. Uh, Stark Brothers carries some varieties of apple trees that are are apple are cedar rust resistant. Um, so you would probably have to go with them and check and see what trees it is that is apple rust. Re I mean, I keep saying apple cedar rust <laughs> resistant, and plant them because. Uh, any other variety is going to be susceptible to the cedar rust. Um, a place to grow, I mean, to buy fruit trees would be Grower Solution, Gurney's, Stark Brothers. I, I would only recommend Stark Brothers, Grower Solutions, or Gurney's right yeah. now because I'm not that familiar with any other tree place. No, I don't, I don't know. Now, you can go to your uh, local nurseries where you live at. If you have any around you, that, and they may have trees there that they have grown themselves that may do fine in your area. We've tried all the ways y'all were telling about killing ants, and it don't work. And it doesn't work. We have found fire that. ants, are, fire <laughs> ants are from hell. <laughs> Satan himself created them, and the only way they'll ever die is when God cast them in the bottomless pit, I believe. I mean, there's, <laughs> there's no, I mean, the only one thing that I found that will kill fire ants is gasoline. You can take and drop a big hole in the ground about three feet deep and pour about a gallon of gasoline in there and stomp the whole cupboard or either light a match and throw it in there and you can kill the bed. But other than that, you ain't nothing going to work. Now you can put poison out and they'll just move over 10 feet and come up again. Yeah. Uh, Cogon grass is another big issue. Yes. Um, we have it our neighbors have it. We don't have it. We have one, well, we little, have one spot. little patch back there, but we've learned that if we use salt on it, it pretty much stops it. Um, we put we had a little patch back here about five foot in diameter, and we put a 50-pound bag of salt on it, and right now it's almost killed the whole patch. So we're going to probably put another 50-pound bag of salt on it, and it will probably should take care of it. And if not, whether we like it or not, we're going to have to hit it with some Roundup. Yeah. Um, they're saying grower solutions out of a lot of varieties – Yes, we are on the waiting list for some yeah. stuff there. Um, Gurney's has a lot. All our Gurney's trees are doing well, aren't they? Uh, we might have lost. I, I, we didn't, well, the only Gurney tree we lost was one the limb fell out of the tree and fell on and broke it off at the ground. I mean, yeah, that's the only Gurney tree that we've really lost. 
and we got a supply of trees from Gurney's. We did. We uh, ordered a bunch of them. And now we bought a bunch of local trees that was in pots <laughs> that we've lost several of them. Yeah, and I thought, thought they would have done better than the bare root, but they didn't. Yeah. So the Gurney's trees were bare root, and they did awesome. Um, do we have any in the greenhouses? Did we put any green? In? No gurneys. We've got grower solutions in the greenhouse. Okay. So all our gurneys are out in the uh, yard along the cabin. We spotted them all over the place at the cabin, and they're looking great. Um, we're hoping this year to maybe get, we got one pair off one one of the pear one trees. One of the pear trees, yeah. Um, but we're hoping they all produce something this year. Gerald said, are Cherokee wax beans heirlooms or hybrids? They're an heirloom. Yeah, and two, um, like cost tools, I talked to them. They don't carry the Cherokee yellow wax beans, but they carry a yellow wax bean. And he said that it's all in what one company or another wants to name it. So we use what we got was called Cherokee yellow wax. Uh, Sally says, says won't your chickens eat the fire ants? You have to understand there's two different kinds of fire ants. There is a... There is the natural fire ants that was here and has always been here. And then we have what's called the imported fire ants. And the imported fire mm -hmm. ants have taken over everything. They came in here from a, a, a shipment back in, I think it was in the 60s or somewhere back then, uh, on a boat. And they have literally taken over everything and you can't stop them. Where do we get our banana trees and what kind are they? All of our banana trees, uh, well, the big ones we got in the front came from a friend out in a community about 15 miles from here. He was growing them there, and I got a few trees from him. The other ones are dwarf trees, and they were gifts from a subscriber. I can't tell you any more than that. I don't know if they're the, what they call them, Cavanaugh variety or... Cavendish? Cavendish? Something like that. I don't know. I think that was it, right? I just don't uh, remember. So I'm not... We haven't really bought any banana trees from anywhere. Yeah. Uh, so we don't, I don't know names and varieties of those. Now, we did produce bananas this time, but they were about this long when the hurricane came through and broke the top yeah, off. Yeah, we were Even so though sad. Danny had it tied, he had it tied from the wind pushing it, but it pushed it all the way over and yeah. broke it. So I have had some turn yellow, and when I open them up, the bananas are not even as big as my finger. And um, the sides of it is soft. It smells like a banana. The sides taste like a banana once it turns yellow. It's just a teeny little slither of a banana. Yeah. Um, somebody says they use white vinegar, salt, and Cup dish dishwashing turban in a sprayer. Top off a of water shake well, spray weeds. Oh, it's talking about it as a weed killer. Well, as a weed killer, yeah. Yeah. And that will work. And you can get what's called agricultural vinegar, which is very, very strong. It's very acidic, and you have to be very careful when you use it. Thank you, Amanda. This was our shirt for the gathering uh, 2020, and it didn't happen. Uh, a lot of people ordered these shirts, and I guess they get to wear them around their house because we didn't have the gathering. Um, uh, the fire ants did come through the Port of Alabama. That is correct, yes. Uh, Sue says she just ordered a second green stalk. Amazing product. Bok choy and spinach did great. They have a smaller green stalk, and I'm going to get a video done. I keep saying that for the last couple of weeks, but we don't have a way to get any dirt right now. Uh, our local hardware store hadn't gotten any in, and I like to use store bought dirt because our dirt will pack in those things. And I didn't want to start anything until we got something that I can put dirt in, but I, I'm going to have to do a video. What do you suggest uh, for moles? Is a butter bean a bean you eat fresh or dried? Also, <laughs> what is a good variety to grow? Uh, you can eat them either way. I prefer to eat mine fresh and green. Mm -hmm. uh, in the deep south here, speckled butter beans are probably the best to grow and the most hardy. Somebody said pitchforks work great on those. 
What do you use for moles in your vegetable garden? I don't know. They eat my potatoes. Uh, they have mold traps. A lot of people say chewing gum. I mean, they have traps you can stick down in the ground. Uh, a good, a good wild house cat. You know, one that um, is a good mouser. A lot of times they get them, and sometimes little feist dogs love to dig them up. So um, it just depends on whichever route you want to go. Uh, Tommy said, "Would you mind talking about the water filtration of Alexa Pure for my Patriot supply?" Oh. We uh, we love ours. Now we've got the two and a half gallon one. Uh, what I like about the Alexa Pure is it's a lot cheaper than the Berkey. Uh, where the Berkey you have to have two filters in it. Uh, the Alexa Pure you only really have to have one. Uh, I do recommend if you purchase an Alexa Pure um, to request the stainless steel spigot that goes with it. I think they may ship it with it now. Um, but uh, the Alexa Pure is it's a stainless steel. I like it's a brushed stainless steel. It's not shiny where it shows up every fingerprint that you put on it. Mm -hmm. um, you can add up to, I think it's four filters in ours or three or four. Maybe three. I don't know. Uh, and it, well, only difference that all that does is it lets the water come through a lot faster. Wanda and I have ours at the cabin where we don't really have any, uh, where we like to filter our water at because we don't have a well over there. And we fill it up, and it we probably won't use all the water out of it in a in a week's period. I mean, because we use it mainly for just uh, making coffee, making coffee, or if I cook oatmeal or something like that, we we'll use it. Or if I just need some water to fill up my uh, uh, my, my glass like this one here, I'll just run over there, and, and you know, I get some water out of it. Uh, somebody asked about these shirts. They're on. Uh, bonfire there's a link in the description for bonfire t-shirts you go to our page and yes there you can order these shirts they're still up um as long as one or two people order they'll print um so yes they are um i was trying to see some yeah i, I highly recommend an electric if 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 the if the, if the country goes to hell in a handbag uh, you're going to have to have good water. And I'm afraid if you're, especially if you're on a municipal water system, your water could get really nasty really quick. And the Alexa Pure takes out so many pathogens and really cleans the water up to where, um, to where it's really good drinking water. I mean, it's really clear. It's really clean. Uh, we we love ours. That's all I can say is we we don't want to ever be without. And when we bought our Alexa Pure, we also got two or three extra filters with it that we keep in the cabin, so that when uh, the number of hours is up on this one that we run water through it, that or the number of gallons, not hours, but the number of gallons is up. We already have a replacement right there. We don't have to wait to order one when we might not be able to get it. Yeah. No, we don't have any dogs. Nope, we have no dogs and we have no cats. No cats. We have cats in our neighborhood that roam <laughs> the area, but other than that, uh, we don't have any cats. We have a dog, actually, that roams the area. We, we didn't do. found that one either. I hadn't found that dog, and Lord bless his soul if I do, but I mean... We, I uh, mean a huge footprint yeah. at our gate, on our side of the gate, not on the other side, on our side, and it was shut. So I don't know how that dog got in our gate. Um, um, yes, yeah, I said last week I mentioned the importance of survival heat. They just bought a Mr. Buddy. Um, yeah. We have a Mr. Buddy in the barn out there that's brand new. We have all the pressure gauges that go with it. We have all the bottles that go with it. I mean, we have it as in case of an emergency because those bottles will last forever if you get one. And the heaters really do a really good job. All right, so Paul DeSac says I have a wood wine barrel for rain barrel the water smells like rotten eggs but the garden loves it could i drink that if i put it through the alexa pure i don't see why you couldn't because the alexa pure is supposed to take out everything do you know about the pink banana from baker's creek i have heard about it but i do not know anything about it i've i've, I've, I've heard people talk about it but i can't tell you from experience because i don't know has anybody tried using ferrets on moles or bowls? I uh, 
have not. I ain't chasing rabbits. There's my granddaughter in there. Yeah, she jumped in She's there. She's giving us a hand. Yeah. Um, and there's the Tinker's wife. She's from down on the coast. She's close. For those of you who use Parlor, it's being taken offline tomorrow, just an FYI. Guys, this is exactly why I told y'all here a while back. Everybody kept saying, go to Parlor, go to Parlor, get off of YouTube, go to Parlor. I had some inside information that told me that this was probably going to happen. And Wanda and I made a decision right off the bat. We were not going over there. Um, as a matter of fact, there's some other things that's going to be pulled down also. I, I'm not going to talk about them. But yeah, you're going to see a lot of things you're, you're, happening, and we're not we're not. I gonna can't promise you that Patre that Patreon <laughs> is going to allow me to continually talk freely over there because now I'm on Patreon. I'm going to have to really watch what I say on Patreon if I want to keep that channel up. Yeah, they're starting to really watch. We still have the Deep South Homestead page on YouTube. Now, over there, I will post a video or I will post something that's going on, a picture or something like that, and you can comment under it. But there's not any links. I, you can't put up post or anything. You can't do that because it has to be just comment on what I put up. That's, that's it. We have to keep it kind of neutral over there. Uh, if you want to ask questions and find out stuff, go to all these other people that have these pages up. You can ask your questions in their their situation. Mm -hmm. Mine is simply a Deep South and what's going on at Deep South. We're trying to reel everything back. I'm, I'm just not going to keep up with the group anymore. If this channel gets pulled down, where would you go? Check out um, Check out our website. If this channel gets pulled down, go to our website, and on our website, we will leave a message talking about where we're at and what we're doing, and um, and we, that would be the easiest way to find out about us. Um, DeepSouthHomestead.com. Yeah, it's just DeepSouthHomestead.com. Um, have we ever used a ham radio? I have in the past, but I don't have a ham license. I was with a gentleman who did have a ham license. In fact, I built his house for him. And um, he kind of let me set in on a few things I thought was pretty amazing. I have been asked by people in my town to get a ham license. But guys, really and truly, I don't have time to worry with it right now. Um, and yes, Gerald, freedom of speech is becoming a dying thing. You're probably going to hear some things in the news here in the very near future about the country of Italy. Um, if it gets brought out, then... Uh, I think you're going to find out that they had a big part in a lot of the stuff that went on. All right. What size is our greenhouse? Our greenhouses are a 16 by 32 high sidewall, high tunnel. They're not greenhouses. They're high, high sidewall, high tunnels. All right. Um, the ham license is available online to get. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, Quite frankly, I don't know that Danny wants to communicate with anybody. I don't. Have, I don't have anybody I want to communicate with. I'll be honest with you. Um, it's one of those things that you know. I don't know. We've talked about it, but we just hadn't gotten into that. That's just not something we think we wanted to do. Um, where are we at now? Because we're past our nine. Yeah, I'm sitting here. My eyes are getting blurry. I'm looking at that. Uh, Judy says, I've tried to grow things like spinach and did not grow well. Oh, I wanted to answer one question. Somebody said something about the Malabar spinach and did it grow in the green stalk? Yes. Yes, it grows really well in the green stalk. Uh, I have some still growing in our greenhouse in the, uh, behind the barn. That stuff, I don't even go out there and take care of it, y'all. And it's still growing. I go out there about every week. And you water everything, and you, it's still growing. You and can't it's stop Malabar spinach. When you plant Malabar spinach, just have a good trellis for it because it's going to take off. Yeah. Um, it, cold kills it. Now, the cold has killed it in one greenhouse, and I just planted some new in mine. It's not up yet, but in my new greenhouse, my radishes are already up about eh, maybe half an inch. Yeah. Something like that. 
Uh, could you layer the bottom of a green stalk with rocks or something to help drainage and save on soil? I guess you could. You could, but you need as much soil as you can get in one yeah. of them. Uh, Lou says, pray for her cousin. She was put on a ventilator today. We will. We've had a lot of people that have asked for prayer uh, over yeah. the last few weeks, and uh, especially this past week, there's been a lot of people sent me messages, and I can't remember everybody's names, but a lot of them that have been diagnosed, went into the hospital, or either they have family on yeah. event. A lot of people. It's it's really probably worse to me right now than it was six or eight months ago when they were saying it was bad. We didn't see it, but now we are seeing it with our family, friends, and people on YouTube. Yeah. So it is. it does seem to be hitting home more now, I guess I should say. Guys, I'm just hoping and praying that we're going to be able to keep this channel going. Uh, I hope and pray that uh, we're going to be able to continue to talk about gardening. I hope that we're going to continue to talk about some things we can do to survive. I mean, this, let's, let's just be honest for a second. We've, Wanda and I have had this channel up for almost five years now. Mm -hmm. We've done our very best to try to prepare people for what we used to say, what's coming. Uh, we've always known about what's coming. Well, what's coming is not what's coming anymore. What's coming is now here. Mm -hmm. The day has arrived, just like it was when Joseph in the Bible, the Lord told him, you're going to have seven years of plenty, and then you're going to have seven years of famine. Well, there had to come that point where the seven years of plenty stop and the seven years of lean began and i think we may be at that point for us now we have had all these years to prepare and to do what we need to do and uh and i think the time has come for us to start implementing the things that we've tried to teach on our channel for the past four to five years um, I know a lot of people have looked at me, and I've been called a lot of things. I've been called a conspiracy theorist. I've been called a wackadoodle. I've been called all kind of things, which doesn't bother promoting me. fear. Yeah, they've been, everybody says I'm a fear monger. I've been promoting fear, all this kind of stuff. And I'm here to tell you right now, you haven't even seen the worst of it yet. These things that I wished I could talk to y'all about, but I'm not permitted to because we're not free anymore. I don't have this, the freedom of speech anymore. I can't sit here and openly say what I want to say, or I could, but then you would not see me again, and our time together would be over, and and that would make Wanda and I very sad, because we love sitting here, and we love uh, communicating with you guys. We love doing the live streams. We love answering prayers, this uh, answering questions, and praying for y'all. This is our ministry uh, what we believe the Lord has laid out for us. And if we choose to be uh, ignorant and go against the rules of the company and have ourselves pulled down from, uh, from YouTube or from Patreon, then our ministry ceases. And it doesn't mean that we have to comply it just simply means we have to change the words that we use in order to still be able to be legal in what we say. Because the thing about it is, would you rather me just open my mouth and say what I need to say and never hear from me again? And our videos, and our bigger, our videos get pulled and you have nothing to ever look at. Or would you rather me each week to gradually feed you a little along, you know, and, and try to stay within the realms of the new rules? Now, I will not, I will say this, I will not compromise my morals. Now, if it comes down to a point where I have to choose between God or man, I will choose God. 
you know, that's I, that's the bottom line. Um, I will always choose God, but so far, uh, nothing has come up that has defiled my moral values. Uh, there's been some rumors about, you know, some of the speech that we can use for me to be able to, for, for someone to look at me and say, Hey, you can't talk about being gay. You can't talk about being a lesbian. You can't talk about gender neutral. You can't talk about these things. Then I'm okay with that because I'm not your judge. I'm not the one who's going to sit here and judge you because of what you do or you don't do. My, um, what I've been told to do from the Lord is to love you and to try to be, uh, to try to be a friend to you, to win you. Um, it's not to judge you. That is not my position. My position is to befriend you and to try to share the gospel with you. I mean, that is my calling in life. And then for me to go beyond that would be would be wrong. So mm -hmm. I, I will not compromise in some areas, you know. Yeah. And we don't we, we have friends in all realms. Yes. We have friends that are uh, black and white. We have friends that are Mexican. We have friends that are gay. We have friends that are lesbians. We have friends that don't believe in God. We have yeah. friends that we are have Catholic. We have, we have Jewish friends. We have atheists. I mean, we have all these friends. Right. It's not for us to judge anybody. We don't want to be judged. We don't even like being judged. You know, when people call Danny a fear monger, it, it aggravates me. So we don't want to be judged. So we shouldn't want to judge anybody else and we like that our channel even though we're talking about homestead we get people say i don't homestead but i like watching your channel yeah danny did porch time the other day we had a person say i don't believe in god i'm an atheist but i get what you're saying so guys we don't want to turn anybody away right that's not our purpose our purpose is to help everybody that we reach in some way shape mm -hmm. or form whether it's gardening or through the word. Through the word. I mean, and it will come down to a point where um, the gospel will be censored. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that's coming. Uh, the scripture tells me that it's coming. Um, I'm not looking forward to that day. Uh, but when that day arrives, then I will not compromise. I will go ahead and say what I need to say. And if I get taken down at that point, then I just get taken down. Only you know? social media platform providers can judge people. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably true. They're uh, doing a good job. They're of doing it a right really now. good job of it right now, or lying to people more or less would be the same. Uh, but, but you know, that's that's where we are at, guys. We are trying to do our best. I'm trying to keep porch time where it's still interesting. I'm trying to keep it where it's encouraging, where it's uplifting, where it's educational. And I'm not going to lie to you, it's getting harder and harder uh, to be able to, to do it and to be able to do a good job of it. Um, and it's one of the things I truly love doing. Mm -hmm. and, and it's... Uh, what time is Danny's kind of... This just helps to talk and just... Think about what's in his well, it's, head. It's, it's my time to reflect on what God has laid on my heart for that week. And it is, uh, it's getting more difficult for me to share because the Lord has laid so many things on my heart about the latter days of the age in which we live in that I would love to share. And I would love to be able to bring uh, modern circumstances. I'm trying to use the right words modern circumstances into the to the video uh, but the powers to be are making it more difficult for me to be able to do that without speaking in uh well say samson in the bible spoke in riddles uh i'm having to learn to speak in riddles in order to be able to uh to be able to continue even doing what i do on porch time and that's making it even more difficult now you're like 
there's some things going on right now and i you know the sad part about it is uh the uh the special forces was involved in a lot of things that that went on this past weekend and i think you're probably going to find that out before long you're going to be able to see that uh, how they were intertwined with a lot of things that were going on and how that they were put in there to gather information. So I think that probably in the very near future, we're probably going to see some things come to fruition that uh, uh, that we've probably known all along. It's just that they had to, they had to gather it uh, through the way in which they knew how to do it. And I think they did a good job. Right. I've talked around the bush without actually saying anything. You, I think. Yeah, you better hush. I got. I got to stop. Okay, so somebody wanted to know about how long you cure garlic and sweet potatoes. Uh, or something. Garlic and garlic. I just lay my garlic out in a good area under the porch and let it dry for like a, two weeks, uh, or till the outer shell on it becomes papery, and or the top dies and, and withers completely away. Uh, you don't want to put it in a high humid place because if you do, it could rot on you. Uh, sweet potatoes, I like to keep them in a cool, dry place for about two weeks to cure before I actually eat them. That way, the, all the starches in them turn to sugar, and uh, and they're a lot sweeter. But you can use both of them fresh you, out of the ground. You can I use do them it fresh. All the time. We, we've done it many, many times. It's just that, you know, it's better to uh, it's better to just to let them cure if you can. They'll last longer. Okay. So we want to put up prayer requests. And uh, we want to be able to pray for the ones that got the virus, the ones that are sick, um, getting over it. Um, I don't know. Is there anybody specifically? I mean, because I can't remember. I, I think we should remember um, uh, Cedar Creek Homestead, the loss mm -hmm. of Mr. Howie. Uh, that still just blows my mind. I mean, I know Mr. Howie had some he had some physical issues. You know, he had some heart problems and he would had. Uh, some other issues, asthma, and some other different things. It just seems like when a person has a lot of weaknesses inside their body, once something like this happens, uh, they just go down really quick. And um, but he's with the Lord. Uh, we rejoice in that, um, but it still don't make it any easier. I'm, I'm gonna just be honest the, with you. The noise people keep hearing is when I have I hadn't turned off the uh, notifications to my Facebook thing. And when people comment over on Facebook, it makes a dinging here on my computer. And for some reason, that's turned on. I thought I had it turned off and it's on. So, uh, Brother Donnie's right, right here. We need to preach the gospel every chance we get. Jesus Christ said in the uh, in the New Testament or the uh, the Brit Hadashah, whichever one y'all want to call it. Uh, he said, "I am the Sabbath." And when Christ said, I am the Sabbath, that means literally that he is to be worshipped every day. You can choose to worship him any day of the week in which you wish, and it is okay. Romans, in the book of Romans, plainly teaches us some people hold one day holy, hold another day holy. Some people eat one thing. Some people eat this. You know, all do it for the glory of God. And at the end, every knee shall bow and everyone shall give an account for what they believe. We're to settle in our own hearts what we believe is right, because only us will stand before an almighty God and give an account for what we believe. We can't blame it on somebody else. It's going to be what we believe as an individual, not what mom and daddy taught you, not what aunt and uncle, grandma or grandpa taught you, but what you believe in your own heart to be the truth, you know, and that's about as plain as I know how to put it. Yeah. Okay. They're just um, talking about Mr. Howie and stuff. Um, I'm just reading comments while you're oh. talking. Oh, let's see here. Yeah. Anyway, guys, it, well, we've been on here for an hour and a half now. <laughs> it's... <laughs> But I don't, but, you know, I don't mind it because as long as I'm answering questions for people, I'm, I'm, I'm very. Uh, and I'm, I'm reeling him in. She has to keep because the longer I stay here, the more it's going to build in me. And he's got to just get off and, and talk to me, not y'all. Yeah. 
we, we're really trying really hard to keep him from just busting out. Yeah. And, um, yeah. I, y'all probably see me doing this a lot of times. <laughs> and things like, I, it brings back a story. I'm going to tell you this story real quick. Uh, I worked for a gentleman one time, or, or I, I worked for his company. I didn't actually work for him. I guess I did work for him because he owned the company. But anyway, uh, really? and, and I asked him one day and I said, uh, I said, sir, can I ask you a question? I said, why do you always, every time I see you, you're doing this right here. I mean, he constantly, he constantly did this all the time. And he told me, he said, Danny, the reason I do this right here all the time, he says, is because if I don't do this, I'm going to kill somebody. You know, <laughs> he said, because people are so they aggravate me so bad, and and I want to just deal with it. And I know if I do deal with it, I'm gonna get in trouble, and I'm gonna be in trouble with the law. He said. So I, I just wring my hands constantly. He said, when you see me doing that, I, I'm usually stressed <laughs> out a little bit. So y'all probably see me sitting here doing my hands like this. It's because one is slapping me on the leg, or I'm going. She, <laughs> she's grabbing my hands. She's telling me hush, you know, because I. I want to tell people what I know, but and I know that I really should, but there are scriptures in the Bible that, that I think about. The Bible says, for him who knoweth to do good, and he does not do it, unto him it is sin. <laughs> and I don't want to be a, a sinner, you know, but... Okay, this has nothing to do with gardening, but okay, I get, I get it. You know, so I'm um, just laughing, y'all. I have to laugh at him. Uh, so I have to, uh, I have to understand. God is in control. God has every, nothing surprises God. He has it all predetermined anyway. Uh, he knows everything. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's all knowing. So I have no reason to worry. I've read the last book. I know the end of the story. So. I have nothing to be worried about. You can't scare me with heaven. I think that um, that's the biggest misconception lots of people have is they get scared about a lot of things, but I'm not scared of heaven. No, me either. And yeah. I guess that's what most people don't understand about our lives. They don't understand how we can just live it and not do the things that everybody else does and be in on all the meds and going to the doctor to we're both, he's 60 and I'm fixing to be 60 this year. Yeah. We're on no medications. We go to the doctor only when necessary. And that is usually once or twice a year, if at all. He went to the hospital last year one time. Um, I think that was it. We did no other doctor's appointments or nothing, right? Just that no, one I trip. I think just that one trip. Uh, yeah. I've not been to the doctor or the hospital <clears throat> in... Maybe a couple of years. I went for my thyroid a couple of years ago. And I'm not taking any meds. That seemed to just kind of heal itself when I kind of got out from under a lot of stress. Everything kind of leveled out with my thyroid. So, you know, I try not to let things stress me anymore. I was letting things get to me. And I guess Danny keeps me from stressing so much. And I try to keep him from getting in trouble. That we make a good team. That's why that's we're it. building. I guess yeah. that's why we're building. We're building. That's right. That's, that's right. Yeah. We're building because it keeps us out of trouble. This is true. Okay. We got to pray for people. We got to jump off of here. We got to get things taken care of. Uh, okay. One of them says, go up, open up another channel you promote and go incognito and let it all fly. I guess you could do that. I could probably do that. But then again, they'd probably track me down. Yeah, I think it would track to either yeah. my checking account or his checking account or something if we opened a channel. It tracks to our emails, I guess you would say, not a checking account, emails. Yes. So it's kind of hard to be incognito with a computer, if you get what I mean. <laughs> okay. Hold a sec. says, I weaned off my thyroid meds and I puffed up like a frog. Okay. We will keep you in our prayers. Okay. All right. Father, we thank you so much for the enjoyable time we've had tonight. Lord, it has been a blessed night. We really appreciate all those that's been in the chat tonight, all the questions that's been asked. Lord, we pray that we've been able to be a blessing to others and 
Father, we, uh, we pray that as the upcoming gardening season comes upon us, that uh, the blessings in Deuteronomy and the blessings of obedience, Father, will come upon us. You told us in there that if we keep your commandments, Lord, that you, we will be blessed in the city, we'll be blessed in the country. So really, it doesn't matter where we live at, we will be blessed. You will bless our children, you'll bless our livestock, you'll bless our gardens, our pantries, our barns, our storage houses. Father, you said you'll bless us. Uh, everything about us will be blessed. And that is if we do what is right and we keep your commands. And Father, I pray tonight. I pray the blessings of obedience upon everyone here in the name of Christ that is in this chat tonight, that they can have these blessings. And Lord, that they will not experience the, the curses of disobedience because, oh my goodness, they're way more than what the blessings are. And Father, I am sad to sit here tonight and say that I believe as a whole our nation tonight is experiencing the curses of disobedience. And Father, it saddens my heart. I'm a lot like Jeremiah, the weeping prophet in the Bible, Father, that who was always lamenting over the nation of Jerusalem, I mean of Israel and Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem, for the sins that they had committed, Father, and the fact of their disobedience before an almighty God and how that they were punished. And Lord, I, in a lot of ways, I'm the same way. I, I'm sad for my country tonight. I'm sad for my fellow brother and my fellow sister tonight and my fellow countrymen and the fact that we're going to have to endure some hardships now because we've been a sinful nation. We've shed innocent blood. We've done things that uh, that is um, against the Almighty, and we've shook our fist in their face. And for that, I apologize, Father. I, I humbly apologize for what our country has done. And I pray that you'll show mercy to the ones that's here tonight, to your children. When you judge this nation, Father, which you're going to, um, I pray for mercy for each and every one of the ones here tonight. And I pray for grace for everybody here tonight, Lord. I pray that you'll provide us with good help. You'll provide the ones that are sick, the ones that have physical issues, Lord. We pray for them tonight that you'll you'll make us like the children of Israel was when we came when they came out of Egypt, that there was not one sick among them or lame. Father, I'm praying that same blessing upon us tonight, that there won't be any sick or any lame amongst any of us. That when all these plagues come upon our country, Father, that we, because we've been obedient, will have all of our needs met. We'll have our financial needs met. We'll have our physical needs met. We'll have our spiritual needs met. Lord, we'll have ample supply of food. None of us will go hungry. None of us will be sick, Father. I pray these blessings upon us tonight in the name of Christ. And Lord, please go with us. And uh, the, the horrible virus that's hit our country and the, the uh, I'm trying to choose the right words, Father. I, you know my heart and a prayer. The, uh, the technology that's out there that's sending microwaves through our system. Father, that's breaking down the T-cells in our body and making our bodies think we have a virus when we really don't. And when our body begins to try to fight off something that's not even really there, uh, Father, we pray. For, we pray for that situation in our country right now also. And Father, for what's going to be happening in the next 10 days, I lift up my hands to an almighty God and I say, Father, we know what you've showed us. And we know probably what's going to happen. Father, I pray for our country. I pray for, for peace for everyone here tonight that's going to see what's going to happen. And for the lives that's going to be shattered, Father. I, I, I just, it brings sadness to my heart. But Father, also some things I know that I can't talk about that's, uh, that's going to bring joy to my heart. And, and I'm, I'm extremely happy for those. I'm going to thank you in advance. So, Father, go with us tonight. Help us to rest comfortable and help us to be able to rise up tomorrow to do your will. We ask these things in thy name. Amen. Okay. All right. So I forgot something because we got off on. Oh, did you show your thing tonight? No. All right. So one thing is this back here.
this jar was sent to me by Carrie. And she also sent some more things. There was two other things. I'm going to show you those. I haven't got a place for these two. This one and this one. Isn't this beautiful? It's a big and small vase that hang on the walls. These are going in my outdoor canning kitchen. My outdoor kitchen is going to have these. Everything I've picked out has got yellow um, sunflowers or the blue colors. So this was perfect. She had no clue that that's the colors I was using out there. She sent them. I love it. It's going out there. And this one is basically an orange color. It's almost the color, if you notice. It's the color of the cabin. And it's the color of the cabin. So she sent them for the cabin, but these are going in the kitchen. Just saying. But that one will go to the cabin. I yep. just had it sitting up there for yes. now. Um, Thank you all so much for the kind comments afterwards there. I mean, we have a little bit about a 15 to 20 second delay. Um, yeah. So thank you guys for all the nice comments. And I'm pretty sure we, I don't know if we got anything else, but I do know those came this week. So I did want to mention that. Okay. Uh, Guys, we, uh, a couple of people have asked me this. I would like to share just before we get off of here. Um, the other book. I know. I know. Okay. Um, people have asked me, what's a good book for seed saving? Um, seed sowing and saving by stories gardening skills um this is a this is a jam up book if you need to know how to save seeds you can probably do we have a link on this or mike can put one in the description okay um it'll that's be a, an amazon link it'll be an there. amazon link you probably got a book and there's one more book here uh this one right here was probably one of my best books i ever come across um and this is called that's a vegetable gardener's bible um, it is probably the best. Let me get up here where you can get the name. Edward C. Smith. Down at the bottom. Let me get my fingers out of the way. This is one of the best books for vegetable gardening I think I've ever come across. If you've got a question, it's in there. The answer's yeah. there. So if I can, when we get off, I'll try to look on Amazon and get those two and put links in the description. So if you want to run back and look at them, um, this book here that I've been reading, I'll try to put the link in there if there's one in there for this one. Um, I think everybody ought to read that one. Yeah. The prices are rising. You ought to read this and see. I'm also reading, let me throw the, this one out there, two others. Pale Rider. Yeah, Pale Rider. That's talking about not this the, virus. The Spanish uh, flu. The Spanish flu, not this one, but the Spanish flu. Yeah. It relates a lot. And the other one I'm reading is um, Jonathan Kahn's Harbinger 2. Yes. If you've already read the first one, you want to read the second one. Uh, if you haven't read either one, look up the Harbinger and the Harbinger 2. Very eye-opening. Mm -hmm. And when you get to the part talking about what's going on with the virus in the Harbinger 2, it'll knock your socks off. Let me let me give y'all a little bit of uh, <laughs> I'm, I got to get off of here, but I got to say something. Uh, if you want something healthy and you want something natural that helps to fight viruses, that is Brazil nuts. Uh, Brazil nuts are extremely high in selenium. Our bodies are very deficient today because our soil is deficient. But you don't want to eat more than two or three a day. Because and they do want to look the benefits of. You want to look up the benefits of Brazil nuts because, uh, and unless you're allergic to them, I don't eat them if you're allergic to them. But um, and this is not medical advice. This is just something that we have found out uh, here lately that selenium is a big time boost for virus fighting. Uh, zinc is another one. Um, silver is another one. Mm -hmm. uh, but the Brazil nuts seems to be. A, uh, seems to be a good route to go for a healthy option. And don't buy them already shelled. Buy them in the hull so that you can keep them in the freezer and you can take them out as you need them so that they don't go rancid on you. We found Brazil nuts on Amazon. We bought 10 we bought, pounds. We bought 10 pounds of them. I think them. we yes. bought 10 pounds of them. 
I don't remember the price. It was a little, it was a little bit pricey because we had to, we had to pay for shipping there. I mean, yeah, yeah. It, we couldn't get the prime with it, I don't think, and we had to pay for shipping, which was not something I wanted to do. But Amazon is limiting their prime to what they want to limit it to. Just saying. Um. Yeah. So. There's a lot of other things I'd love to speak with you guys about, uh, especially about. The uh, CHINA, uh, they've done a lot of things here lately that uh, I will tell you this, check out Jamaica. Uh, there's some things going on in Jamaica that um, will blow your socks off um, that has to do with CHINA. Um, kind of makes me really nervous. Uh, I could tell you a lot more stuff. I wish I could. But we ain't. But we're not. I got to, I got to, as Barney <laughs> Fife used to say, I got to tickle, I, I, I got to. Take a lock. Take a lock. Yeah. Um, somebody says we're working too much to have stress. Yeah, we are enjoying this build. I mean, the cabin was different than this yeah. build. The cabin's been stretched out over a long period of time, and we like what we're doing over there. And most everything there is hand. He's not using any tools like nail guns, nail guns and, stuff. and suppressors and stuff like that this yeah. build is like bam 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 yeah, bam this is my old style of work here i just put it together <laughs> yeah. we're going at it 90 to nothing less than 30 days and the outside's complete the inside's nearly complete i'm gonna say three quarters to or better we're complete. better we're three quarters we're better than three quarters away because yeah, we're about three quarters of the way finished with the yeah. inside. All that's left is building cabinets and at build making a kitchen out of it. Okay. So. Uh, one person there says apricot seeds are to fight cancer. Yes, apricot seeds carry what's called B17. B17 was discovered in the mountains of the South Pacific. And uh, the tribes there had no cancer, so they've learned that the apricot seed does help fight cancer. So we'll say that. Okay. Love y'all. We got to get off of here. I'd still in here all night if it wasn't for that. This one is going to slap me in the head here in a minute, and she's going to tell me that I got to stop. So I got to stop, guys. We will see you guys in the next video or whenever we can. <laughs> Who knows what the what 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 the powers to be.